healthier hormones one-on-one. -on -one. This module is like that extra little source um, when we want to get healthier, into a better shape of mind, less stress, and kind of go for consistency in your results. I just want to make, make um, it very clear at the very start that you losing weight and putting on muscle is going to come down to calories. Calories in versus calories out. If you want to lose weight, it's going to be less calories than your maintenance on a long-term basis with a, a few cycles of, of roller coasters in between, um, plus training, plus hitting your protein goals, plus doing personal best training, plus reverse pyramid training, like training and calories and protein. That's it. So if, if you're, you're looking into this module thinking, oh, how, am I, how else am I going to lose weight faster than what I'm already doing? It's probably not going to happen. If anything, like this module itself, it's kind of those for, for those who have kind of really got a grasp, like an extremely solid grasp on your consistency and your mental frameworks when it comes to dieting. For those who are a bit more volatile, you're a bit more um, like you, you're wearing your heart on your sleeve with every single weigh-in, you, you're, really, um, you're really paranoid about um, like tape measurements and, and taking progress pictures. For those who are in that category, I'd probably, I'd save this material until you've got the, the calories in, calories out down pat. Um, <clears throat> this, this material, is all about optimization and reduce stress. And this is the actual health material. Um, a really, I guess, controversial opinion that I have is that it, it took you, uh, it took some very long-term unhealthy habits of excess calories for a long period of time to get you to where you were. And for you to get to say like a healthier body weight, um, healthier body fat percentage, it's going to, require you to be in a calorie deficit, so calories underneath maintenance for a long, long, long period of time. Um, and being in a calorie deficit for a long, long period of time, that in itself is unhealthy, like according to how your hormones react over a long period of time. Um, there, there are tricks and, and hacks that you you either heard about, you'll see in the modules or you'll experience where um, in order to trick the body into thinking that it's not in starvation mode because it's been hungry for so long, We'll, I'll get you to eat at maintenance for a week. And therefore your body's increases leptin levels, which is a hormone. Um, and it's like, oh, I'm fine. I'm not in a survival situation anymore. I can, I continue, I can continue to um, lose weight without stress. Um, I'm, I get, and that's, that's one element that we do to, in this whole program in the coaching material that we obviously have done to, to help you lose weight along the way. Um, once you're like so close to getting to your body transformation goal, or maybe um, this is almost like a, um, a last resort, maybe you've got some funky stuff happening with your diet, maybe you're really stressed, maybe you're losing sleep. Maybe there's, there's just a lot of <clears throat> emotions affecting your life at the moment. Um, and that in itself, being having such a, 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 a strong peaks and valleys of emotions can actually cause you to, to overeat, be more prone to be inconsistent with your diet, with your workouts. And maybe if we can try and try and minimize those valleys and peaks of emotions, uh, if we can minimize them as much as possible through diet um, and really specific diet. So taking things out that are, might be causing more stress, so cortisol um, might be causing more um, or, or a lack of drive and motivation. Uh, so there, there might be some, some food, some chemicals, some exposures that you're putting onto your body, into your body, drinking, um, or inhaling that is causing you to have these emotional peaks and valleys. Um, so this, that's what this, um, this entire, I guess, module is based on in context to weight loss and, and muscle gain. It is helping you become healthier, but de-stressing, taking control, being more motivated, being less volatile in your emotions that could lead to you being inconsistent. Um, healthier hormones, one-on-one. -on -one. So uh, to summarize this page, this module, <clears throat> um, essentially the, the more fat that you have in your body, for fat to be on your body, it will literally, it takes estrogen and produces estrogen in order to maintain that fat cell on the body. So in fact, so that the, the to, to maintain not just a fat cell, but a full fat cell that's on your body, 
to maintain it, estrogen needs to help maintain it. So the more fuller fat cells that you have on your body, so the more overweight you are, the more estrogen that you're producing in your body. The more estrogen that you're producing in your body, uh, the more prone that you are to having, obviously, um, less the, the, the lesser ability to put on muscle, um, the more likely it's going to have an effect on decreasing your mood, uh, the more effect it's gonna have in unbalancing other hormones in your system. So you, you've increased fat, increased estrogen, increased hormone imbalance, which then leads to you putting on more fat because you've got this bipolar kind of emotional states, like roller coaster emotional states, sorry. And that leads to more fat, more estrogen, more emotions, more, therefore more fat, more estrogen, more emotions. Uh, you get what I'm saying? And, and this can compound over days, weeks, months, or years, decades. <clears throat> and so I've got this picture here. It's kind of just to quickly display that and, and what it could lead to. So we we kind of all start out our weight gain journey or, or unhealthy journey. Because that's the thing. I've, I've kind of focused this picture more so on weight gain, but it can easily be subtracted to inconsistency so the more inconsistent you are in the gym uh, in a new diet the more hormone imbalances go off whack the more which lead to more inconsistency and whatnot and we go down this pyramid of a, a ball that's picking up steam picking up more like a snowball that's picking up even more sticks and stones as it's rolling down the hill and it's getting faster and faster and faster um and we go for everything from like stress and emotional eating all the way down the chart to the inevitable immune issues vitamin deficiencies, disorders, um, and ultimately, if, if you stay on those pathways for long enough, it, it'll either lead to, unfortunately, passing away or reducing the amount of years on your life and therefore an earlier death. Uh, and I'm very serious. Like, <laughs> we, we can talk about, oh, I was just, um, I'm all, I'm well all and good for having like celebrating holidays and eating at maintenance for strategic purposes, but when you're in such a way where you've been overeating calories as an emotional stressor response and you're putting on weight and weight and weight and you're self-sacrificing, self-sacrificing in silence, um, you're lowering your libido, you're starting to affect other relationships and then that has a, a negative domino effect on yourself and you, you get in this tragic whirlwind of, of dominoes. It starts with stress in your life, hormone disruption and a lack of information. Um, at the very top. So this is what this this whole module is to help you identify, okay, what is stress doing? What is hormone disruption doing? And what is a lack of information doing um, in terms of stop but encouraging you to have, be more emotional eater, be more lazy, quote unquote, be more prone to excuse making and, and losing track inside of your vision. So th this is the this module. Um, this is the information. So hormones, what are they? We kind of guesstimate what they are. They're... Um, they're chemicals, chemical messengers in your body that are responsible for pretty much every single fun function in your body. Um, <clears throat> not every single one, but pretty much everything. So, and they also have like this synchronicity. It's, it's almost like a syn symphony of all your hormones. So if, if one is up, it usually means the other ones are either down in, in a way to compensate or it affects, it, everything is cause and effect in terms of hormones. Um, so you can't have high estrogen without having low testosterone um, and if you do have high estrogen with high testosterone that's going to cause a uh, an increase in say things like cortisol which either wouldn't have if you didn't have higher uh, other hormones in your body as well so you get what i'm saying so everything's cause and effect in terms of hormones so once we start um balancing out one set of hormones it'll have a beautiful flow and effect to your other hormones um, what hormones are there? Okay, we've got <clears throat> estrogen, the female hormone, you, which I'll talk about significantly in this module. Estrogen isn't a hormone to be demonized whatsoever. Obviously, it is responsible for um, female sex characteristics, but also heart health, bone health, um, mood, uh, obviously pregnancy and reproduction. So, um, and obviously, yeah, fat cell uh, maintenance. Um, awesome uh, progesterone, so the pregnancy hormone made by your ovaries, placenta and adrenals, you know all this, are responsible for fertility and menstruation and balancing estrogen. So if progesterone's out, if we look at like the, the, the modern birth um, control pill, um, we'll, we'll go into it in other modules. I do bring it up in, in a different module. 
um, testosterone. So ladies, yes, you have testosterone in your body, in your system. It's, it can be like 60 times less than some men, uh, especially if you've got low testosterone, he's got high testosterone. Um, it's very important to fertility with, with women, as well as muscle mass, bone density, heart, brain health, and libido as well. Um, for you, it's made in your ovaries and in your adrenal glands, so just above your kidneys. But So this is the thing, when you pr produce a lot of testosterone and you become highly, um, I don't wanna associate, because that's the thing, testosterone isn't associated with aggression a lot of studies actually pointing to a loss in testosterone is associated with aggression. So <clears throat> when you are in your motivational pursuit kind of hormones and you're up and about, you've, you're just on top of the world um, and you're releasing testosterone, typically that's with women, it's associated with releasing adrenaline and cortisol at the same time um, from your adrenals. So this is why when compared to men versus women with our testosterone releases, we get a really calm and soothing effect because 95% of our testosterone is made um, in our testes, whereas a lot of your testosterone is made from ovaries and adrenal glands. So um, with testosterone with women, a lot of it comes with a lot of fatigue afterwards because you're releasing so much adrenaline and stress hormone along with it. So um, next one, we'll keep going into it. Leptin, so the fat slash fullness hormone, um, it's made by fat cells. Um, this is what I was talking about before with leptin, um, how if you're in a calorie deficit for too long, um, leptin, leptin levels can, can crash so much that um, it's, it's essentially, it believes it's in a survival state um, and that, um, that we need to hold onto as much fat as possible. So it signals to the brain, hey, stop moving around so much, stop being so active, I need to hold onto as much fat as possible. So that's why we want to keep leptin at a, a good state because we don't want it to signal to your brain, hey, stop burning calories because uh, we obviously want to be burning calories. Um, it tells your brain that you've had enough um, energy stored as fat. Uh, leptin, if it's too low, your metabolism lowers, that's what I was talking about, and you become hungrier. Um, often responsible for plateaus when dieting for too long, that's what I was talking about. So ghrelin, the hunger, and it's a sleep hormone-ish. So um, it's really associated with sleep rather than being the sleep hormone. Um, released by the stomach and signals to the hunger to the brain to increase your appetite. So this is a thing like with, um, um, if with leptin, when leptin's high, ghrelin's low, when ghrelin's high, leptin's low. That's why those are the, the, the two synchronicity hormones. And that's the thing, if you have extremely low quality, quality of sleep, um, typically you'll wake up with higher ghrelin levels in your body, in your system. Therefore, you're, you're actually more hungrier when you wake up on a poor night of sleep. This is why it's so important. And if you, if you can't sleep because your hormones are out of whack, we've got excess cortisol slash excess stress in your life. Um, it's all tied in, as you can see. So your, your hunger hormones are determined essentially by your, um, by your, I guess, appetite and your sleep. And then your sleep is determined by your ability to be consistent in the gym, exercise, eat well, um, be de-stressing and having a healthier balance of hormones. So if we don't balance out your hormones, your sleep is affected, your, your eating appetite habits are affected. So it's all tied in. Uh, insulin, um, energy storage and fat hormone, You've probably heard about insulin before. I'll, I'll, I'll buzz through these pretty quickly because I know this is um, more so um, uh, something you can read out on your own. Uh, serotonin, the mood hormone, thyroid is an actual gland um, and it controls a lot of things to do with, um, with your metabolism. Cortisol, the stress hormone uh, made by your adrenals, uh, contributes to blood sugar. Vitamin D, vitamin D is actually a hormone uh, rather than a vitamin. We just can supplement that with it rather than just getting the exposure from the sun. It has a lot to do, it has a, a, some cool combination effects with um, satisfaction, mood, uh, depression, immunity, and um, actually appetite suppression. Uh, beautiful. Okay, so weight gain typically causes hormonal disruption, not vice versa. So as I mentioned, that's kind of what that picture at the top um, kind of described, the more weight gain that we have, more hormone disruption, but the more hormone disruption, the more likely we are to have habits that lead to weight gain. <coughs> um, the hormone disruption, so this is what I kind of really want to dive into and sink this module into. So um, unless you're eating a reduced estrogenic 
set of foods and living a less hormone disrupted life. So that's one. Um, and you're in, like you're in the twenties of a healthy body fat percentage, and you have a healthy BMI for your height. If you've got all three of these, then you're in the honeymoon phase of your program, um, of your of your system, of your of your body transformation, of your health journey. So you can obviously you can be in the twenties in terms of body fat percentage, and you can have a healthy BMI. But if you're in a very hormone disrupting um, environment in terms of food and, and exposures to chemicals via um, things that uh, you're literally touching in your environment, your clothes, your detergents, your grooming products, um, unless you've got all these three things, you're typically going to be more vulnerable to being in an unhealthy state long term, inconsistent and um, susceptible to poor moods, poor quality of life. Um, nice. <clears throat> Beautiful. So um, like I said, it's it's a you get, you get stuck into that negative domino effect. It's the chicken or the egg argument. So um, we talked about that. You can read this in your own time as well. Synergy is destructive reaction, blah, blah, blah. We've already talked about this after male. Yes. So a lot of this material, as you can see, um, I created another program called testosterone training. And the testosterone training um, program for men is extremely focused on hormonal balance because men uh, typically that's where they lack the most that leads to quality of life um, and uh, the the amount of information that I've gathered from testosterone training has actually helped enhance my booty building challenge program by diving so deep into um, and the endocrine system and the hormones um, ideas concepts yeah, beautiful beautiful that's what we already talked about beautiful this is hormones control your emotions the most um, and just to cement that statement so let's just say that um, a lot of you have pets um, but that, let's just say you love them you care for them dearly um, best friends almost children for some people some of them have human names like Dave um, but let's just print it and fortunately you just come home one day and one of your pets has passed away I love this pet. Pet's, pet's gone. Stop. Pet hasn't died. I'm just, I'm not just, just joking, but let's just pretend that you, you imagine that scenario, but that scenario has actually happened. The the mere act of seeing a, a pet uh, pass away or, um, sorry if this brings back <laughs> any terrible memories as well. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Could have been a, a better analogy, but the actual, the mere thought of like the, the act of seeing something from your external environment has an effect on dopamine and serotonin withdrawal from your brain, which actually causes the um, the effects and emotions. It's, it's kind of what we see um, happen on a chemical hormonal stage when we experience sadness. Um, so things from our external environment can cause us to perceive certain events that can actually cause our hormones to become unbalanced, which will lead to certain actions being taken place. Um, so, and, but that could be vice versa. So if you are eating a diet that leads to serotonin and dopamine withdrawal, so let's just say you're eating something rather than seeing a, a tragic event, but if you're eating something, a certain chemical or, or for a certain, let's just say estrogen is extremely high, which is causing a loss of serotonin and dopamine or damaging your those receptors, which is causing you to be more depressive symptoms and more sad then that can have you feeling sad and despondence and feelings of de despair so the mere act of changing your diet to bring those estrogen levels down into a normal range reducing your body fat percentage into a more normal range can actually have an effect on your serotonin and dopamine receptors um, which can therefore actually help you to become less depressive feelings, less despondency, and less, de less despair. So that's the, that's the analogy that I kind of want to use. That, um, or another one, like if you were, were blindfolded, but someone had you eat chocolate, um, that will have an effect on increasing dopamine responses, which will have an effect on your other hormones, which will have an effect on another hormones. So there's, um, the whole idea is that, um, which will have an effect on insulin, it will, blood, it will spike your blood sugar level in, uh, 30 minutes to an hour, you'll start to feel hungry again because you've, uh, your blood sugar levels started to crash. And now you're more susceptible to eating more food. And then 
And then you start overindulging on foods, even more chocolate because you've, you've, your blood sugar crashed and now you're in a, a, um, a, a hormone, not a hormone, you're in a, a food craving kind of a mental state. So th this is the thing, like your hormones are like the biomarkers of what's causing you to take certain actions. And if we can control certain types of hormones, we can control the the absence of events. So it's not that um, we want to, it's, it's essentially we're helping you avoid getting into states that are unhealthy for you. And we're helping you to get off that negative domino effect. Um, so we're more on track, you start to feel healthier, you'll live more healthier, higher quality of life. It's gonna affect your personal relationships, your quality of your life, your, the quality of yourself and your performance at work, therefore your finances or, or your role as a mother or your role as a student. Um, yeah, this is um, hormone. And that's it. I'm not saying that we don't want to have imbalanced hormones all the time. I'm, I'm prone to having a huge weekend um, every every month with one of my friends. Like I'm, I'm prone to having a, a night out with... Um, with a date and we split like a, a bottle or two of wine. Like it's not about going to the extremes and being balanced all the time like a, a monk. <laughs> no, it's, it's about minimizing our chemical hormone disrupting dispo, uh, exposure as much as possible. So that when we do have these other events that are throwing us out of whack, but, it's, but we're living a higher quality of life because we've experienced those events, um, they're less damaging and they're easier to recover from. You don't get thrown off whack and you, you're able to get back on the horse. And you, So you get the, almost the benefit of, of uh, both, the best of both worlds. Beautiful. So before we demonize estrogen, we've already talked about that. Uh, as well as I'm Okay, so we've already talked about that, estrogen. So that's the thing, what is estrogen? I'll go to estrogenetics in the next module. Me next module is crucial. It's the most disruptive hormone. Um, and it's essentially fake artificial synthetic estrogens that are having, or let's just say chemicals or hormone eliciting chemicals in our body that we get through diet, that we get through exposures to our bodies from products, makeups, deodorants, grooming products, things that we're drinking, things that we're, if we can control those things that are having this dangerous estrogen-like effect onto our receptors and our hormones in our body, then we can essentially get to that state of better health. Um, beautiful. Well, I'll go through this in another um, module. I've got, I've got this in the next module as well, but if you wanna read through this as well, this is all the effects that excess estrogen can have on your body, on your system, um, or estro excess fake um, estrogens. So abnormal growth, birth abnormalities, and this doesn't include obviously genetic susceptibilities and disorders and extraordinary circumstances that are causing you to have excess estrogen. I don't wanna disregard those. I know some people are genetically susceptible, but it's, it's literally like the one, less than 1% of the population. Um, so abnormal growth, birth abnormalities, allergies, anxiety and panic attacks, autism spectrum disorder, um, brain abnormalities and neurocognitive decline disorders, bloating, blood clots, strokes, breast um, lumps, uh, fibrocystic lumps, swelling, tenderness, and that can happen in men as well. Um, surprisingly, cancer, so breast um, cancer, and more hands and feet that are cold, decreased lifespan, depression and mood disorders, diabetes, disrupts glucose regulation in the body and the brain, DNA damage and mutations, delayed puberty in boys, but early puberty in women, so we're seeing a lot of women um, or girls um, start their, their, their cycles and hit puberty at a very early age, like like 9, 10, 11, rather than when it used to be like 12, 13, 14, slash 15. Um, estrogenics being stored in fat tissue, shocking. Um, and then a few things from the men, uh, fatigue and sleepiness for women, gynecomastia for men and women, so increased breast tissue, um, hair loss, uh, and that's like over your body rather, oops, rather than on the top of your head. Is the microphone still working? Yep. Um, hormonal imbalances, immo immunotoxicity, headaches, infertility, regular menstrual periods, um, or, or greater uh, PMS symptoms, liver toxicity, mitochondrial damage, obesity, osteoporosis, or reduced bone density, very tied to estrogen, reduced sex drive and libido, sleep apnea, 
oh, I did skip, I've skipped over the ones that are specifically targeted for men. Um, sleep apnea, trouble sleeping. But if you, I guess if you have sons or plan to have kids that are sons, so reduce growth of penis and testicles, reduce sperm concentration in men, um, short stature in puberty for boys, um, sleep apnea and trouble sleeping for everyone, tall stature for women sometimes, estri uh, various blood clotting complications such as stroke or thrombosis, vascular and heart problems, and obviously a lot more. This is just what is linked and associated to having excess estrogen. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Um, Beautiful. So this is what this um, this module is about. Let's get into estrogenics. What are they? Which ones to avoid? It's, and like they, I've made it, summarized it. I've made it very easy to determine what you can do starting today to start to reduce your estrogen exposure and why they are so bad and where they're found, why they're so toxic. Um, it's not about being perfect, but it's just about trying the best you can to remove these from your environment, from your diet. Um, I'm not expecting anyone to get this perfect whatsoever, especially you've got a huge to-do list of living life and you're stressed out as, as, as it is. So uh, yeah, I encourage you and welcome you to um, the Healthy Hormone module. All right, I'll talk to you in a bit.